Welcome back. Now, for those of you who have been following my episodes on this YouTube channel, you'll for certain have noticed that every one of them has been dedicated to the exterior design of the vehicle, what it actually looks like. That's all good and well because exterior design is what actually drives you to the car in the first place. It has to look good. It has to fit with your personality. There is a whole nother part of car design that I haven't touched upon yet. We're going to shift it. And we're going to start looking towards the interior design and how that affects you and your relationship, your attachment with the vehicle. The interior is probably even more important than the exterior design of a car because that's where you live. That's where you have to feel absolutely comfortable, almost at home. Now, it hasn't always been that way because if we look at the first cars that ever came out, they were basically just seats. You just sat in there and controlled the vehicle. There was no consideration for ergonomics, safety, or anything like that. As car design slowly progressed, designers started to concentrate a little bit on how we could actually bring architectural interior design, furniture design, aesthetics, materials into the interior of the car. There's been something else that has also been evolving, and that is the glass of the vehicle. Now, I've often spoke about in the past about the homogeny of modern vehicle design. The question is, where do we start looking next to define the personality of the vehicle. Well, the next best place to do it is on the interior of the design. And that's why I've partnered in this video with the leading technical glass innovator, Corning. So what I'm gonna do today is sketch out the most imaginative interior that I can visualize using the current technology that Corning has at their disposal. What I'm gonna do here is really push down the barriers, push down the walls, and go to the limits of how a designer should approach something like this. I'm not gonna go easy with the Corning Glass Engineers on this sketch. So sit back and watch as I push past the current limits of interior design. Now, when you start the sketch and you wanna capture the maximum amount of viewing angle, in other words, open up the sketch such that you can capture all the interior. You want to do what's called this incredibly wide angle sketch. What that kind of will show you is the front, the middle, and even the rear of the sketch when you finish it. So that gives you what we would call a three quarter wide angle perspective, typically from the rear, sort of from the corner, the three quarter rear that gives you a view of the dashboard the seats in the front, the seats in the back, and everything in between. And you'll notice that I'm not even hardly even holding the, the pen. The pen is more like a brush for me at the moment. You can see how far back I'm holding it. So as I'm progressing with the sketch, I'm starting to think a little bit more now in detail of what the interior is actually gonna communicate. You can imagine that in the future, as we move towards what we call level five, which is completely autonomous driving, we will need to introduce augmented reality. And I want to demonstrate that here. So what you're talking about is something that we call heads up display. And that is the projection of information in front of the passengers, be it the driver, be it the passenger next to them, or even the rear passengers where we could probably show that on the glass in the back, for example, using that whole surface there as an entertainment screen. If you're a passenger in the back seat, for example, on a long trip, and you're passing by, for example, an interesting view, an interesting castle, monument, whatever, you could potentially just use, through touch technology, a zoom function that brings that view closer towards you with added information about what you're looking at. So we will be able to bring that technology. I think the engineers at Corning already have something in mind, planning on how they could actually engineer that. Now, we're looking at a bridge here, which is probably the theme of the sketch that I've had in mind uh, as it's been being developed. Instead of real leather, instead of something perhaps metallic or, or any other material like that, use glass. Now what I would imagine is that the glass could perhaps originate at the base of the windscreen, around the A-pillar, and sweeping all the way back through the shoulder area of the, of the door, right where the glass meets the body. You could have that all as an information panel through there. 
You could even orient it slightly to the driver so that he has his driver information, driver focused area. And what that would do is introduce perhaps a curve, slight curve in the glass. Glass brings new possibilities for design freedom and customization. And one way we could achieve this is with Corning's cold form technology, which allows us to achieve an extreme amount of curvature in the glass. With the ability to bend glass like this, we can achieve something extremely unique. And with that ability to curve glass, you could create something quite dynamic, quite unique. That glass doesn't have to stop as it comes out in front of you here. It could then change shape and become a positive curve. So the driver and the passenger each has sort of their individual environment, their own space with their own entertainment or information centers around them. The other function I want to try to introduce is as we have these decorative features, oftentimes in, in interiors of car, those chrome alloy strips, whatever kind of material we're using, why not use glass? Why not introduce glass along this function here that typically is a decorative piece and calculate or direct it to generate the image of wood, alloy, any of those features today that are luxury and very expensive, we could even put information within that glass, that piece here, and then transfer that image of, of information, slowly blend it back into the material that you originally want it to be in, say ebony, say oak, whatever type of wood you choose to have on that day. So it's quite exciting to see the possibilities now that we can start to introduce when we start changing towards a technology that allows that kind of personalization to the vehicle. Now a current problem we have with the interiors quite a bit is what we call glare. When you have a high gloss glass surface, typically when the sun hits it, it shoots off glare and it makes it very difficult to see. Working with high tech, the engineers at Corning are developing very, very high quality anti-glare reflective surfaces, which means that even though you have the shiniest light on that surface, you can still read it in daylight. So that's a huge advantage to interior safety and interior design in general. As we move back through the roof, that whole roof area, the interior area of the car, is an area of design that designers have always wanted to be able to treat differently. We've been relegated to either just using what we call a moon roof or a sun roof with a bit of tint in it. We can introduce a technology that makes the ceiling of your car become the sky, the view, whatever you want it to be. Water running over your head, rainfall, snowstorms, beautiful sunlight. I think this area then, being customizable, being able to transmit an image into that glass tech such that you create your own ambiance for the car is something hugely exciting for designers, engineers. For me, if we could introduce outer space, some kind of solar system, galaxies, meteoroids, whatever, having that technology above me, sitting in the car, enjoying it, that would be an ultimate thrill. Now, the one thing that we have to consider when we're designing for innovation is that everything we're doing pretty much passes current levels of certification. And Corning has certainly done that with the head impact certification requirements that we're using for all the glass around the passengers in those critical areas where something could potentially happen. Now, I'm going to introduce a little bit of shading for those of you who probably think this is still a bit too rough. And again, designers work rough when they're first doing the ideation sketches, the, the conceptualization of the sketch. But as soon as we start introducing a little bit of color, it all starts to come, come together. And I'm not gonna use bright colors for this at the moment. Eventually the Photoshop will do that. But what I wanna introduce here is a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to my cool gray markers, and that will give me the advantage of being able to see shape and depth to the product we have some of the information flowing through the areas that normally we would use just as decorative pieces. What I would envision when I start to put the color in later, perhaps in the Photoshop, is that through this area here, we'll be able to read some information. Obviously the driver will in his position here be able to see some of the information that typically would be his 
information. Obviously the mirror would be located or the screen for the mirror would be located in that area. The passenger is going to have their own information on their screen showing through the actual materials. Another idea I had was the possibility of introducing another screen to the rear passengers such that they have their own personal working screens that they could use during a trip. And what you would do is be able to pierce the existing glass that we're talking about here. So that glass console that runs through as a bridge throughout the entire length of the interior would have a pierced area allowing you to extract a computer screen say in this area here that would let the computer screen come up and either you could have one slot or two slots for example one for each passenger and that would give them the ability to have their own working environment with them using that technology that allows us to pierce the glass in a very sharp very defined way and there we have it. I think we've pretty much taken this 2D concept sketch as far as we can take it. Now, to take it to that next level where we can really visualize it and imagine it as a real life concept, I think we have to go to the next level, which is to make it photorealistic. So why don't we go ahead and do that now? The opportunity to work with cutting edge technology and industry leading solutions is something that every designer should be actively seeking out and actually be grateful for. With that, I want to give a massive thank you to Corning for partnering with me in this video, giving me access to their resources and allowing me to pick their brains. As always, let me know in the comments below, do you long for the days of yore, those days in the past where you could actually turn, feel, and get some feedback on that button? Or are you excited about the possibilities shown in this video that bring cutting edge technology, new advantages to the interior design, a whole new look? Does that push your button? I look forward to reading all your comments and I look forward to seeing you in the future.